A couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys via the community tab which achievement is the hardest to complete in Payday 2. With over 1,200 to choose from, it's pretty difficult to come to a consensus when it comes to true difficulty. Even I, with well over 2,000 hours in game, have only 1,258 out of 1,262 achievements unlocked, but can't for a moment conclude that those remaining four are definitively the hardest I've ever tried throughout the game's life cycle. Over the years, our tools as heisters have changed, meaning even the toughest challenge can become comparatively accessible compared to when it was released. However, even with these measurement issues, today we're going on a deep dive to try to definitively state the holy grail of all achievements in Payday 2. First things first, let's get one thing out of the way. Payday players on Steam have been known to bend the rules from time to time. Not all challenges have been attempted under the same conditions, which makes trusting Payday's Steam achievement completion stats a little difficult. Not to mention, the more recent the achievement, the lower the portion of the total player base to actively have attempted it, meaning we have situations where apparently 0% of people have completed car versus car, despite this clearly being something that can be achieved in under 5 minutes by almost any player. Not to mention, some achievements are locked behind paid DLC, confusing things further. So, instead of just using the official Steam stats, I'm going to go off a combination of metrics, including your own personal feedback, to solve this one. Let's start by establishing the categories of challenge for payday achievements. First, we have the mechanically difficult. These are achievements such as Reputation Beyond Reproach, which require you to display some degree of in-game skill to complete. Then we have the time consuming. These are achievements which can be claimed by anyone should they have the time and willpower to push through and include all infamy achievements such as King Amongst Thieves. Then we have luck based achievements which require a certain uncontrollable event to occur, the most notorious of these being Guessing Game. Finally we have squad based achievements. These are ones which require a full 4 man team to be coordinated towards the same goal such as with Short Fuse. Let's all we'll be honest here, having friends really is the hardest challenge for even the most hardcore of Payday player, but fortunately many of the 4 mass DLC achievements can now be done solo with AI, meaning introverts rejoice. That shouldn't downplay the difficulty added from forced cooperation though, as we've seen from Heisters of the Round Table in particular. For the sake of this video, I'm inclined to value mechanical challenge over all else when it comes to deciding upon the hardest achievements in game. However, there are exceptions to that, which I'll absolutely be covering in today's video. I think before we dive into the situation on PC, it is worth visiting the console versions of the game to get a good lay of the land. In fact, let's head all the way back to the Jurassic era of 360 and PS4 for the initial release of Payday 2. If we do, we'll see outside of the Platinum Trophy for completing all achievements. The hardest four achievements on both consoles were Guessing Game, Short Fuse, They See Me Bagging, They Hating, and Most Wanted. Most Wanted was incredibly time consuming due to the painfully slow XP gain of release Payday 2 and the lack of content to complete on release, but it was certainly not overly difficult if you had the willpower in you. Short Fuse was a great example of requiring team play to complete and being counterintuitive to the heister's goals. To complete it you have to escape with 7 bags from the bus on day 3 of Rats without defusing any C4. This can only be done in time if you have a full team coordinating the loop moving process once the first C4 is triggered to blow, which is entirely unnecessary so long as you have the intel from day 2. Not immensely difficult, but certainly annoying and gated for most solo players. Guessing game was frustrating as it requires you to cut the wires randomly in the FBI offices without hacking the server. As you have to do this twice, you'll be looking at a 10% chance of making it through without setting off the alarm on each attempt. Then you'll still need to make it through the rest of the heist in stealth, making it that bit harder, especially back in the day when detection worked differently. Now this is the sort of challenge you can just keep throwing yourself at until you get lucky as there's no level of difficulty required, but back in 2013, I'd argue it didn't get any harder. Finally, for release payday, They See Me Bagging was incredibly tough. In fact, I'd even argue it was the hardest of them all, as it required skill, time investment, some RNG, and more often than not, a competent and willing team. Your best bet back then for 8 bags was cooking them on rats, which may or may not give the garage escape, depending on your good fortune. This was an incredibly time consuming process, and one that could easily be failed with old payday difficulty. Then you need to haul two sets of four bags through the incredibly vertical garage escape, which really required a team of four to be done consistently. This combines all the pillars of payday difficulty, making it a true nightmare. 
There's a reason that I didn't get this done until three years after launch. It does have a higher completion rate than Short Fuse and Guessing Game these days, but that's probably because it's the sort of thing that can be achieved simply by playing the game normally, instead of doing something that has the potential to sabotage the heist. However, I'm sure we can all agree, even eight years on, these three are still some of the toughest challenges in game, hence them still holding less than a 7.5% completion rate on Steam. Moving on to the Crime Wave edition for the next generation of consoles, there's even more agreement between the two as for both the Death Wish and Overkill difficulty completion achievements are exceptionally rare. This is another example of mechanical difficulty and time consumption coming together to create the perfect storm when no one really wants to complete it. But at the point consoles are at now with Stoic, I suspect that more than 0.2% of the player base could complete every heist on Death Wish if they really wanted to. After that, Sounds of Animals Fighting was only completed by 0.3% of the PS4 player base, further proof that having friends truly is the hardest thing you can achieve in Payday 2. In terms of more mechanical challenges, I've got the power was the least achieved on both console. Keeping the power on is not the easiest thing to do on the bomb dockyard, but it's also not an insurmountable task. I wonder if this completion rate is so low because the bomb heists are quite unpopular to run, or because stealth is the vastly preferred method of doing so. Another funny one to see at less than a 0.5% rate of completion is swing dancing, which only requires 50 melee kills on a single day of a job. Incredibly easy with modern day sociopath and infiltrator, but not so much on console apparently. I also want to note Tabula Rasa here, as it was a bit of a notorious achievement in the early days, which many of you mentioned being incredibly hard still. Completing Hotstone Breakout on Overkill with no skills or armor, a Golden AK and Tommy Gun, was awesomely tough when Overkill was one of the game's top difficulties and perk decks didn't exist. But with their advent, this has become an awful lot easier to complete, hence its slightly higher stats over on PC. That said, I'd guess the difficulty achievements really are as tough as it gets on Crime Wave Edition outside of some of the DLC achievements which I'll be diving into for the Steam version. Now then, as we move on to PC achievements, as I've already mentioned, it's hard to put too much stock into Payday 2's pure Steam stats. With fewer than 80% of players ever making it through a heist, you can already see there's going to be plenty of non-starters skewing the statistics. Which is why I not only ask for your opinion to gauge community sentiment, but also use the website Steam Hunters. This achievement tracking website uses a multi-point estimation technique, combining its user-based data, Steam track data, and accounts for cheater profiles to create a more robust point system which better reflects the true challenge of completing an achievement. By combining these two elements, it should be much easier to identify the true rarity, and therefore likely difficulty, of an achievement. First of all, I want to give an honourable mention to achievements like cleaning out the house for completing wave 9 of a holdout on Golden Grin. It's no secret that holdout is not a popular mode, and the casino is decently challenging, but I assumed more people would be knocking through these achievements after it became well known as a levelling method. In any case, only 1.3% of the community have picked this up on Steam. Moving on to the real challenges here, we of course have the many notorious time sinks of Payday 2. These achievements generally consist of playing the game in an abnormally time-consuming way, or intentionally failing objectives for the sake of Overkill's twisted amusement. Another way out, Dr. Miserable, Kiss the Chef, and A Long Night of Horrors are some of the most infamous examples of this, forcing you to remain in heist for up to two hours, which can actually be tricky with the wrong sort of setup. I'd argue that Heist de Consignero, On Border Crystals, and at Farmer Miserable are the two most difficult stamina achievements due to being played on wide open maps, the latter of which being completed by only 4.8% of the community, despite the Heist having been out for six years. The idea of having to move each coat one by one on day two is more daunting than it is truly difficult on Overkill, but this achievement is still too much for some. Overdrill, the secret from Payday the Heist, is another test of your patience, but this one is made even harder by the fact you'll need to do some research and gather a full team to activate it, whilst also playing on a higher difficulty than those I've previously mentioned. However, it's only a 30 minute drilling sequence once you get into it, and all you need to do is stay alive for that period, meaning this one is really gated by your ability to research and team up, rather than the pure challenge of the heist. Some other achievements are even more time consuming over an extended period. The hilariously named I did not have sexual relations with that bulldozer requires you to trade seven civilians whilst wearing the 40 second mask. This means you need teammates to go into custody and be the one who trades for them. 
Of course, you can quickly farm this with a friend, but if you want to do this legitimately over normal play, you'd better hop into my usual death sentence lobbies, else you'll be wearing Bill Clinton's face for the foreseeable future. Finally, for the lengthy category of achievement, there really is nothing more time consuming than hitting Infamy 100 and becoming a king amongst thieves. Even at its most optimal, this is comfortably 200 hours of gameplay, which very few people sink into even the largest of open world games. Would you call this difficult? Not necessarily. If all you're doing is farming diamond store for countless hours, there's honestly not much to it, so to call this the toughest achievement unlock in the game feels off to me. However, it absolutely is a badge of honour worth bragging about, unless you cheated for it. Then it's pretty strange to brag in a video online. Whilst I'm on the topic of time-consuming slogs, it's absolutely worth mentioning the difficulty achievements awarded to players who've completed every heist in the game on a certain difficulty. Of course, the hardest of these is one more down, no more to go, requiring you to beat all heists in the game on Death Sentence 1 down difficulty. Not all heists are superbly challenging on Death Sentence, however, making it through the least completed Bomb Heist Forest, Goat Simulator, and chiefly Elaborat on Death Sentence is absolutely no small feat, requiring precise understanding of game mechanics, an excellent build, and more often than not, a competent team alongside you. Truly, I believe one more down, no more to go is in the top three hardest achievements in game, but still not the most difficult from a purely mechanical perspective, as you could be carried by teammates and still reach that same goal. Up next, we have the incredibly awkward achievements, which aren't truly difficult per se, but require something strange enough to scupper most heists out there. For example, Black Tie Event should be easy, requiring you and your crew to only use pistols and two pieces on the Birth of Sky heist perfectly legitimate setups for overkill difficulty, yet only 5% of all players have ever achieved this. Other examples include Expert Landing, Goat in 60 Seconds, Entrapment and Matrix with Lasers. There's nothing overly difficult about clearing Big Bank without killing snipers, even when escaping with the C4 tunneling asset and climbing the crane. But the question is, how many people have even used that asset, and how often have bots potshot a sniper to ruin this one? So despite being in-game for many years, only 2.6% of us have bagged this one, giving it one of the lowest completion rates relative to its time in-game. Megalomania is another similar story. No one really runs Maniac, hell I'm not even sure anyone knows how Maniac works, so the chances of a full team of four ever using this deck simultaneously are slim. So having the entire squad at 65% average mania will basically never happen unless you choreograph it and plan it out. In other words, this one only exists for the achievement hunters out there who aim to specifically complete it, but in terms of what it actually requires from you, it's honestly not that difficult. Moving on to the achievements where speed exists as the primary challenge, the Auction Cry for Shacklethorn Auction, Salem Asylum for Prison Nightmare, and What You Want Me To Dance for Scarface Mansion offer some pretty serious difficulty. Auction Cry in particular is incredibly tight, requiring a 5 minute stealth completion which can be entirely gated without some decent RNG on a solo run. However, all of these achievements are made massively easier when playing in a team as you can split up for objectives. This means it's tough to assert they're the hardest in game, but if you want a challenge, running these solo has got to be up there with the best payday has to offer in terms of single heist difficulty. But on the other hand, what if you can't aim for the life of you? In that case, accuracy achievements such as 120 proof, and in particular this calls for a round of Sputniks, may be as hard as it gets. The key behind completing these is in landing collaterals to get your accuracy above 100% early on. The thing is, 120 proof can be cheesed by getting all 120 required squad kills with a melee weapon and then simply landing a single shot on two cops with a high spread shotgun or explosive. This calls for a round of Sputniks requires 100 snipers kills specifically, meaning it is tough for the aimless amongst us, but it's not really of the same level of something that requires you to play on DSOD. Of the other new 2019 to 2022 achievements, Gunpowder Glory from San Martin Bank is up there as an area defense type challenge, which would be tough if it wasn't for the overkill difficulty label making it much more accessible. Not Today is extremely easy on the surface, but actually landing a GL40 shot to kill a cloaker in the air is more luck than skill giving the timing required. I imagine most people who've unlocked it have done so accidentally, making it hard to hold up as truly very challenging, but seriously, I would not be happy if I was having to actively seek this achievement out. Alright, we're down to the business end of things now. You already know that I think the All Heist DSOD difficulty achievement is up there as one of the three hardest in the game, so what else should join it? 
Well, my first thought when putting this video together was reputation beyond reproach. This was an achievement added to the game purely to be difficult, forcing players onto Deathwish at a time when it was still the apex of payday difficulty. Whilst it has been difficulty crept by Death Sentence's addition, you still can't deny that a No Downs challenge is suitably hardcore by Overkill standards. Not to mention, it also specifies that no member of your four-man crew is allowed to go down, meaning you're not just reliant on your own performance to unlock it. To make matters worse, Cloaker takedowns count towards this, which can sometimes feel unavoidable even when playing cautiously. Oh, and it also has to take place on the alternate day 2 of election day, breaking ballot, a heist that few people are overly familiar with and that some likely don't even know exists. Reputation Beyond Reproach was, at one point at least, absolutely the hardest achievement in game. But times have changed, and I think the Deathwish stipulation makes this just marginally easier than the likes of Goat Simulator on Death Sentence, with 5.5% of people now having completed it. However, the next achievement on my list has certainly not gotten any easier with time. Caution Wet Floors is comfortably the most frustrating achievement in the game, even if it isn't the most difficult in your opinion. It requires you to escort the Yakuza convict to the scaffold without touching the ground, meaning that once he's spawned, you can only hop from car to car to move along the bridge with him. First of all, the prisoner can spawn in one of four vans, with some being vastly easier to move from than others, meaning there's immediately an element of luck to this challenge. Second, although the achievement only requires us to play on overkill difficulty, since we're forced to run the suit for movement speed, it's actually quite easy to go down without any cover. Also, ammo will become an issue. Third, some of the jumps are extremely awkward, requiring close to perfect timing, and it's not always that clear whether you've made them or not until you reach the scaffolding for the achievement to pop, or not as the case so often is. Finally, should the prisoner stray too far away from you and get stopped by the police, it's entirely possible that you won't be able to shout him back into moving without standing back on the asphalt, meaning you can easily fail this achievement due to absolutely no fault of your own. 5 to 10 minutes wasted depending on your earlier luck. This makes it absolutely infuriating to attempt, and at least in my experience, the toughest challenge to complete in game. Payday 2 is not a platformer, and I think this is further evidence of that fact. In total, only 3.6% of the community has cleared this nightmare, and it's insane to think that more people have spent hours airlifting individual goats than have made it across the green bridge without touching the ground. Except there's one final elephant left in the room, a secret achievement called The End. We now know that this is awarded to players who were able to complete the Payday 2 secret, one of the most elaborate out-of-game and in-game puzzles we have ever seen in gaming. 2.4% of players have made it to that point and completed Payday 2's true ending. At a surface level, it involves completing the White House up to the Peoc on Overkill or above, fighting off a horde of teleporting cloakers while solving a word puzzle, before finally shooting the dentist and activating a giant pyramid with bars of mine gold. Easy, right? Well, that's ignoring all the prior steps that got you there. First, you need to complete all Story Essential heists. Then, you need to play an eight-note tune on Scarface's piano before translating 20 paragraphs of alien text to find out which 20 additional achievements you'll need to complete first, including the possibility of one of those being Overdrill, already one of the hardest achievements in the game. From there, even once in the White House, it's not as simple as I made it sound, as those cloakers will not drop ammo, meaning you're on a timer once down there, and the word puzzle you're solving is a complex mythological riddle that's both asked and answered in that same alien language, which is read from back to front. Oh, and if you miss your shot on the dentist afterwards, you've got to do it all over again. Yet yeah, there's a great deal of complexity here which other achievements don't come close to matching, even from a mechanical standpoint in some cases. Of course, this is all comparatively easy for you, because others have gone beforehand. Some have created mods to auto-translate the text, others comprehensive documents of all steps required, including the solutions to the riddles and the note order to be played on the piano. But just imagine for a second, what if you were the first? The first to find and translate the Kataru language, solve the puzzle of the world's oldest song, the first to find yourself down the mineshaft, faced with that giant wheel of incomprehensible text, and solve those 13 riddles. Honestly, for those pioneers of the secret, I can't imagine there has ever been a tougher challenge within the world of Payday 2. 
but for us lucky few who were able to follow in their footsteps, I suppose things weren't all that difficult. So my vote still goes to Caution Wet Floors. Honestly, I think I'd rather do The Secret again from scratch than do this again. I still have nightmares. In any case, ladies and gents, here's where I want to hear from you. What achievement was the toughest for you to complete? Did I miss any serious challenges that have eluded your completion for years? And are we now in the golden age for payday achievement farming? At least in my opinion, since the addition of Leech, there has never been an easier time to 100% payday 2. If you want assistance doing exactly that and completing any of these achievements, I strongly recommend Unknown Knight's channel. The guides he creates are second to none and have been interspersed throughout this video. Also, if you can't hit Infamy 100 to become a king amongst thieves in-game, you can always head over to my storefront over at Apex Gaming PCs and pick up your custom-built rig of the same name to get your crown that way. All of the machines on my page are tailored specifically for playing Payday, so do have a browse through after this video. As for me, I'm off to work on more of those self-imposed challenges you've been suggesting, many of which make these achievements look surprisingly simple. Next up, speed is going to be the name of the game. I'll see you all very soon. As ever, thank you very much to my mean infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early exclusive access to my videos, including the story videos, check out my Patreon link below. Remember the Discord is open to all if you crave some more payday discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one.